Welcome to Airlines 101 with Laura. And I had a previous question on a video that I made asking about the advantages and disadvantages of VORs and NDBs. And actually what the uh, commenter said is why are VORs better than NDBs? So let's look at that. I want to kind of talk to you about that today. So here's a picture of a VOR kind of shown like a bicycle wheel and an NDB. This kind of illustrates really why a VOR is different from an NDB. One of the big advantages of a VOR is that it sends out a signal in all 360 degrees directions like a bicycle wheel. And that brings us to a big advantage of the VOR and that is that we have 360 degrees, 360 courses that we can choose as a pilot to fly to the VOR. Along those 360 degree courses, Another awesome advantage of the VOR is that we get automatic wind correction. This is going to be explained in a little bit, so keep stay tuned for that. You also have really accurate reception. Um, the VOR can give you that course guidance within plus or minus one degree. And it's also not affected by weather, so that is an advantage as we'll see when we talk about NDBs. The VOR also has a to from flag, so it's pretty clear to the pilot if the VOR is receiving a signal or if it's not. So that's another advantage. Couple disadvantages of the VOR is that the reception is line of sight. So what that means is we have to have a clear view of the station and if it is blocked by a mountain terrain slash trees slash some sort of obstacle, we're not gonna get good reception. And the VOR is not at every airport. There's all kinds of places in the world where there's no VOR available. Brings us to some good advantages of the NDB. It is very easy to go directly to the NDB. Um, let's look at that picture again. So it's easy to go direct to the NDB because the NDB in our airplane are my receiver, which is called my automatic direction finder or ADF. It automatically always points straight to the NDB. It's just a little arrow and it's going to point at the NDB. So the advantages are that it is easy to go direct to the NDB. It just go straight to that arrow where it's pointing. It is not line of sight, so it doesn't have to worry about terrain, obstacles type stuff. It is available at some airports where there's nothing else find that actually uh, worldwide in some countries there's still NDBs available and there's no other way to fly an instrument approach. Some disadvantages are these are going away in the United States. They are subject to weather interference. If we have thunderstorm, the NDB, the receiver in the airplane tends to point at the lightning. It could point at electrical disturbances. And there's also no flag to warn the pilot of the station going offline. That's why when you're using an NDB, for navigation, you should be listening constantly to the beep, beep, beep of the signal to make sure the signal is still coming through. So that can get kind of annoying. So that is some of the disadvantages of the NDB. Now I promised we would look at wind correction. So this is a, a picture of the VOR example of a course line and this airplane here is shown flying along the course line. They are appear to be trying to track inbound on the 180 degree radial. So we have a course line coming out straight south that's on the 180 degree radial. The pilot is tracking inbound to the VOR and we have some wind going on that is coming from the west. So the wind blows the airplane off. Let me use my pointer kind of show you what's going on. So the wind is going to, is blowing the airplane off course down here at the southern part of the picture. But as the pilot sees that they're being blown off course, they can start applying a wind correction. Now they might've applied a little too much wind correction and they get a little bit on the left side of course, but then using the VOR again, we can just take out some of that wind correction and the VOR gives us an automatic line that we can follow. If we're using wind correction appropriately, we can fly straight to my station. What can happen on an NDB? So uh, this is called homing. So you tune up the station, the arrow is pointing straight at the station, but we have some wind coming in this example from the north. The wind is blowing the airplane south of the course line 
And if all I do is just keep following my needle pointing to the NDB, I will end up doing um, what's called homing to the NDB. So let's go ahead and draw on the slide. So um, homing to the NDB is basically I'm getting blown off and I keep pointing at the NDB. Eventually I do end up coming back to it, but I've gotten way off my intended course line, which was to fly 090 degrees and go toward the station. Ideally with an NDB, you would apply some wind correction. Here's a picture of what would happen if you applied wind correction appropriately. So the airplane is trying to track to the NDB here. They get blown off by the wind, but then they apply a wind correction and they start flying to the station. So you can apply wind correction to tracking to an NDB. It's more challenging than with a VOR. A VOR, the pilot interface that we have with the VOR signal, just makes it easier for us to select one of those 360 degree courses and fly it to the station without having the tendency to do like what's called homing into the station. So hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe my videos and keep an eye out. I am hoping to do some more instrument uh, flight related topics in the coming months. Thanks for watching.